welcomed today. So that's how they welcomed him, like a king. Every single Sunday when we have communion, we sing a song, or say the words to the song, and it says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, and we say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. That's the thing that they say. What do you got in your houses? What do you got in your yards that we could lay down for Jesus to walk on? Anything flat? You got welcome mats at your house? Yeah, okay, nice. You do that? So that's how they did it. They put all this stuff on the ground to give him a royal welcome. And in church, we have the song that we sing and words that we say to welcome him. So I want you guys to figure out today, we're going to have everybody walking around with their palms, and you guys can be the leaders. But we're going to um, figure out how to welcome Jesus every single day. Maybe not with palms on the ground, but how do we make a red carpet for Jesus with the things that we do. How do we welcome him into our life, life every single day? That's your homework. Just to think about that. What are the palm leaves in your heart? How are you making a welcome for Jesus in here? You guys want to leave this? You guys want to be our leaders today? I want you to go grab your family so they can walk with you. And everybody else, we're going to do... Okay, thank you for coming up. Head back to your cars. And you guys are going to be the first ones when we start. Just making this up as we go. That's fine. So once everybody's in their cars, we're going to listen to the gospel, the procession gospel, Palm Sunday gospel, and then all of us will have a chance to, to do our own procession. Our processional gospel comes from Mark chapter 11, the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the field. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. For redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ, today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along the way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that, joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The season of Lent began on Ash Wednesday. We confessed our sin. We remembered our mortality, our need for salvation with the words, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We expressed our desire to repent, to return to God. And then our journey, our pilgrimage of Lent began. The ashes on our brows were made from palms that were burned. Gather up your palms now and ready your hosannas. Hosanna in the highest. Through the powerful gift of baptism, God joins us to the death and resurrection of Christ and marks us with a new cross. Through baptism, we move from the fear of death to the promise of new life. We pass from the stain of sin to pure forgiveness. Only through God's grace, poured out in these waters, can we reverse course and move from ashes back to palms, from sorrow and guilt to new and glad hosannas once more. Remember your baptism and know freedom and joy. Hosanna in the highest.
we gather with hosannas under the shadow of the cross. It is because of this shadow that we cannot jump straight from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. Under this shadow, hosannas will fade and crucifies will ring out. Under this shadow, in the days to come, we will tell the story of your passion and complete our Lenten pilgrimage once more. In the wake of Ash Wednesday, and trusting in the promise of baptism, we come forward to worship. Under this shadow, we offer our praises and palms, thankful for your guidance and care. We offer ourselves in service to you and in love for one another. Gracious God, accept our worship today and throughout this holy week. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to get out of your cars. We're going to process while we sing, and I invite you to pause as you walk past to remember communion, to remember your baptism, to remember the things that are always a part of us, even if we're not inside this building. God is with us wherever we are. So the song will start. Grab your palms, come right around this way, and go back around. Again, welcome to you all. It's so good to be here together. Uh, I have just a few announcements I want to lift up before we get back into our time of worship. Uh, as our season of Lent draws to a close, so do our Lenten studies and activities. Uh, we finished up our book on Bonhoeffer and also the ecumenical series. All the videos are posted. If you haven't had a chance to see them or if you couldn't be there for the book study, all those videos are online as well as some, some summaries that you can read. Uh, on our website and then the ecumenical ones the link is in the bulletin and uh, it's the Mechanicsville ministry YouTube page you can search for that too 
I uh, also wanted to lift up that our Lenten offering, if you would still like to donate anything extra as a part of your Lenten discipline to Caroline Furnace Camp and Retreat Center, please get those offerings in today or sometime this week. And just make sure that you mark on your offering envelope or your electronic transfer that uh, it is for the Lenten offering or for Caroline Furnace. Uh, also want to make sure that you all know uh, that vaccinations are out there. Uh, I got mine last week, my first one, and in three weeks, less than three weeks, I'll get my second. The more that we all get vaccinated, the more that, as long as it's medically able for you to do so, uh, then the more that we can get back and get out there to help others. And uh, the ship is turning, we're getting there. Uh, for a while, it was pretty much like the ship stuck in the Suez Canal, but little by little, we're digging it out. We're turning it around, we're getting there. Uh, but uh, there's a link in your bulletin to the Virginia State website to get registered. That's how I got it. Please also know that uh, the prayer list is going to be reset on April 4th. We do that a couple times a year. If you have updates to the prayers, uh, please get those to the office. And finally, our Holy Week schedule this week. We will be worshiping here in our parking lot, drive-in style, on Maundy Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and on Good Friday at 6.30 p.m. And our Easter festival worship will be one week from today at 10.45 a.m. If you have other announcements uh, that you'd like in the bulletin, please get them to the office. Please read over everything else that is there. Please join me as we pray. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The image of the servant of God is one of the notable motifs in the book of Isaiah. Today's reading describes the mission of the servant whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the servant does not strike back at his detractors but trust in God's steadfast love from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced, therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand up together who are my adversaries. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Philippians. Christ did not act to attain status and glory, but was obedient to God, even to the point of death. Following Christ's example, we do not seek personal status or glory, but care for others as God cared for us in Christ's death. From Philippians, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our 
Our gospel today, our passion gospel, comes from St. Mark. The passion story in Mark's gospel presents Jesus as the one who dies abandoned by all. He shows himself to be the true Son of God by giving his life for those who have forsaken him. The Holy Gospel, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to, be to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give Judas money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asked, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you to a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as Jesus had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, 
I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here, keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests. The elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. And the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. A 
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner from to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man named Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then, what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the, of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled the passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance, among them Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the Younger and Joseph 
Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, was, saw where the body was laid. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Hosanna doesn't mean hooray. Hosanna doesn't mean Yippee! The crowds that were greeting Jesus as he entered Jerusalem at what would become the start of a holy week, as they laid down cloaks and branches, as they offered a royal welcome. What they were really saying when they shouted, Hosanna, was, save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the one from the line of David, please, save us all the way to highest heaven. Now imagine, in the span of just five days, the shouts echoing in Jerusalem's streets had gone from Hosanna, save us, Savior, to crucify him. The motion had gone from laying down cloaks and branches on the ground so that Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of David, would receive the royalist of welcomes so that his feet would never even flirt with touching the common dust of the road, to a cross being raised, Jesus nailed to it, royally marked as the King of the Jews, so that his feet would never walk on any streets ever again. Imagine that just five days. And within those five days, Mark's account of the Passion begins. And it begins, of all places, in the house of a leper. It begins with an unnamed woman breaking open a jar of costly ointment, the frankincense and myrrh from the manger making their reprise, anointing Jesus beforehand for his impending burial. And while others grumbled at the waste of such a gesture, Jesus says that she has performed a good service for him because he will not always have me. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Imagine you only had five days with the tide turning from Hosanna to crucify. What would be told in remembrance of you? Would you also anoint Jesus, declare him king and savior, no matter the cost? Would your honoring acts include you in the proclamation of the good news, regardless of whether or not your name was recorded? Would you betray? Trade the whole self following of Jesus or something a little more instantly gratifying. It wasn't what you expected anyway. Time to cut your losses? 
Would you prepare a meal? Would you prepare to dine with Jesus, the new Passover lamb, who empties himself and humbles himself to deliver you from slavery to sin? Would you prepare a seat at your table for the Lord and for others, like lepers and extravagant anointers? Would you receive the body, the blood, the covenant given for you? Would you become what you receive? Would you bluster when confronted with sin, harumphing out of, surely not I? Would you slumber when Jesus asks, asks you to stay with him and pray with him and remain with him? Would you slumber when Jesus asks you to abide with others in their times of crisis and need? Would you offer a kiss of friendship, of lying lips, Would you flail about with swords and lop off others' ability to hear what Jesus has to say? Would you try to arrest Jesus' ministry, prevent him from doing what he had come to do, finding it all just too scandalous? Would you desert? Would you flee? When the rubber hits the road, scattering the palms, would you stay or go? be exposed, laid bare as a wholehearted disciple, or head for the hills? Would you distort Jesus' words, explain away Jesus' mission, diminish Jesus' gospel? Would you deny your association with Jesus, keep your faith clandestine and convenient, not risk the trouble of association, not speak up until the moment is far, far past? Would you regret what you did or didn't do, said or didn't say during your five days? Would you swap out Jesus for an edgier savior, a tougher savior? Would you bear a cross only under compulsion? Would you mock and abandon compassion? Would you spectate only? Would you succumb to it all? Or? Would you be like the centurion, affected? Would you recognize with astonishment as the sky went dark, as the curtain was rent, as God's true love was let loose into the world? Would you declare and testify and proclaim, truly this man was God's son? Would you attend like the women, following and providing, doing all that you could even when there was nothing in your power to do? Staying close regardless of all your other woods and coulds. Would you be so bold as to carry Christ's body as your own? We know what Jesus would do and did. We know the lengths to which God would go and went. We know the things the Spirit puts into motion and still stirs. We know what happens in these five days and we know what happens in the three days afterwards. We know that in these days of passion, Christ took on the qualities of the suffering servant prophesied by Isaiah, sustaining the weary, suffering abuse, turning to the Lord God alone for help. We know that Jesus inspired the Christ hymn Paul includes in his letter to the Philippians, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. We know that Jesus took on the role of Passover lamb and scapegoat. We know that Jesus instituted a new covenant in his own body and blood for you, for me, for the forgiveness of sins, in the simplicity and familiarity and nourishment and fellowship of a meal. We know that in tortured prayers in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, not what I want, but what you want. We know that palms and hosannas gave way to a cross for us. We know what Jesus would do and did. But imagine in those five days, what would be told in remembrance of you? 
when Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You say so. Pilate's reply, he gave in to the pressure. He punished a man he knew to be innocent. And he hung a mocking sign on the cross. That was his response. And these five days at the close of yet another Lenten passage for us, we are confronted. In our lives, is Jesus king? Jesus says to us, you say so. What do our words, our actions say to Jesus, to this world of attacks and fear, and pandemic, and apathy, and worry? How do our woulds and coulds play out? Nameless women with costly ointment, lepers opening our homes, centurions with nothing to gain by our witness, constant supporters at Jesus' side every step of the way, mockers, flawed disciples, layers of palms, shouters of hosannas, screamers of crucify, forgiven sinners, evangelists and apostles, passers-by compelled to carry a cross, humble servants bearing cruciform wounds of our own. Whoever you are, However your woulds and coulds play out in these five days or any other, this is the story of God's love for you, for me, for all of us, to and through the cross. We dwell in this saving passion in these five days to come. We wait for the world, with the world, for the three days after. And next week, on the first new day, we approach the tomb. And there we will see how God answers our hosannas. May God be with you in this holiest of weeks. Amen. The hymn of the day is O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who gathers us in the wilderness to redeem us, anoint us, and make us new. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's promise of mercy.
God at the margin. We have wandered far from your call again and again. We lose our way. We turn inward, afraid of the world around us. We forget that you have saved your people before and promised to do so again. Do not remember the deeds of our past, but turn our faces toward the future, where your forgiveness is sure, your welcome is clear, and your love overflows. Receive the good news. God turns to us in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in you. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility, redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. And your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world in all nations and struck the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice, sustain soldiers, and guide those who command them, that they may serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. On this day, we especially pray for each other. Debbie, Johnny, Leroy, Adam and Bonnie, Ted, Steve and Sue, Doc, Mac, Lois, Ruth, and Judy. We pray for our extended family and neighbors, the Allen family, Bonnie, Kathy, Duane, Robin, John, family and friends of Al Drigger, family and friends of Lois Florio, family, friends, and fellow Leo of Captain Donald Lambert, Jr., Carolyn, Junie, family and friends of Sylvia, Suzanne, Renee, Lynn, Michael, Lori, Christina, Pat Ruffner and Mr. Ruffner, Roger, Dee, Ken, Kim, Karen, Sandy, Elaine, our veterans, their fellow soldiers, and their waiting families, the people and pastor, Reverend Catherine, of All Souls Episcopal and our shared ministry, hospitals, nursing homes, and other health care facilities, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, World Health Organization, medical researchers and scientists, schools, workplaces, government institutions and municipal agencies, those affected by natural disasters, and all those affected by the recent acts of violence in Georgia and Colorado, and for all who travel. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You call followers to tend Jesus' body and death, sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, and all who offer support and grief. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith such promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, you are life. 
we pray for our world, our country, our community, and our church as we face the challenges of coronavirus. We pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones, for the sick and their families, for those fearful of an unknown future. We pray for the millions of unemployed and underemployed, for children and others at home, that they may be safe from abuse. We pray for those who are alone and isolated during this time, that they may feel your loving presence. We pray for all the hospital and health care workers and all first responders that they receive needed supplies and be kept protected in the work that they do. We pray for those making decisions about how to live into the future and when that will happen. Keep us all in your care as we wait for a new day. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. great. God of all families, you have given us families to be sanctuaries of blessing, comfort, and love for each other. Under your protection, fill us with harmony, hope, and health. We pray this week for the Warmbra, Weaver, and Worley families, as well as our Messiah family. Guard all of our hearts that we may display love instead of hate, anger, or bitterness. Lead us all to be grateful for your abiding love and enable us to glorify you by sharing that love with others. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share time. At this time we receive and offer up our gifts and offerings to God. For those of you watching at home, uh, you can drop off offerings to the office during the week, send them in to the mail, uh, send them in electronically. But to all of you, we appreciate your continued support and generosity to maintain the ministries here at the Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal 
that we may pass over from death to life with Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now
God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me in a short litany as Holy Week begins. Today we have cheered you on as our champion and hailed you as our hero. Forgive us tomorrow when our enthusiasm wanes. Today we have entrusted you to rescue us from our pitiful circumstances. Forgive us on Tuesday when we decide we can take care of ourselves. Today we have made you the centerpiece of our very existence. Forgive us on Wednesday when we forget to remember who you are. Today we have called out to you loudly by name. Forgive us on Thursday when we pretend that we've never met you. Today we have star stared at you with the star-struck eyes of fans and groupies. Forgive us on Friday when we avert our eyes because it's too painful to see you on the cross. Today we have expressed our unsuppressed hopefulness in the future you have in store for us. Forgive us on Saturday when we believe all is lost. Today we have been boldly certain of the earthly ways you will redeem us. Restore us on Sunday when we are startled and awed by your rise. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending song is Go to Dark Gethsemane. Thanks be to God. Thanks.